You know, my butt doesn't hurt as much as I thought it would. What? My butt. You know, we're two hours basically on the on the road now without getting off. Oh, I got off a few times. <laughs> Not that kind. Oh, sorry. So I thought my butt would be more sore, but nope. I think it was. I was just getting annoyed at all the, you know, right turn, left turn, right turn, left turn, right turn, in the city. Oh yeah. Now we're doing this beautiful road here. Let me put my visor down here, or not visor, but windshield down. At least now you can see, hopefully, better. Now that I have the GoPro Hero 10. Is Moose taking a drink? No. No? Okay, I thought you were taking a drink. I don't know if you all can see this very well, but this is a, a new system that we have kind of jury rigged. It's a Yeti cup with the whole thing, not the slidey thing. And I got a Camelback hose, ran that down in, and I got the Camelback bite valve so you could bite to get water and then unbite to just stop the water. And that's, yeah, it worked out. And I got the little clip to hold it in my giant ass cup holder, so. I don't know if you want to do the same, but I'm having a good time with it. Is that a liquor store? It says ABC next to it, and that's a little dinky place. Wow. In North Carolina, it's the Alcohol Beverage Commission, where you can buy the spirits. You can get beer and wine at the supermarkets, but spirits, you got to get at the ABC. Okay. So, um, we are on, uh, what is it, 501, 15, 501, something like that. Outside of Durham, north of Durham now, heading toward the Virginia border. And there's a sheriff coming up on us, want to make sure we do the right thing. Yeah, not today, Steve. Yeah, not today. Doing four to five. Person County. We are in Person County. That's tobacco. Hmm. Is that a lady? Oh, was it? I, I wasn't really I looking. Moose and I were talking earlier about technology in vehicles like cars and motorcycles and how some people pine for the old days when you could do most of the work yourself. The engines were very simple. Didn't really take a whole lot to get them working right. And I think we both agree, Moose and me, that uh, we don't really want to go back to those days. I like the technology. I think Moose would agree. You don't have to worry about whether or not your car is going to start in the morning, which is wonderful. Yeah, I do it better than you I think about it. Back in the 80s, still the 80s. Yeah. 5,000 miles, the car was worn out. Yes. Yep. Other people consider it, you know, oh, I don't want that in 100,000 miles. Out. Exactly. It's going to die. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. And motorcycles, too. I, I love the technology on these. I, I love not having to worry. And if you go to a higher elevation, you know, because it's electronic fuel injection, you don't have to worry about it. And you got heated seats and all this wonderful, lovely stuff. The automatic transmission, blah, blah, blah. And 
Now, some who are very sensitive about the Harley issue might, might think that I'm trying to somehow secretly criticize Harley. No, no, no. Harley's got all the modern stuff now, too. It's got the traction control. It's got the ride modes. It's got the EFI and the throttle by wire. And that's... I did it once. Even my 06, I did it with the battery. I mean, anything I've better. Yeah. But even nowadays, I mean, I've better... I wouldn't even more hesitate to want to take my Harley and get my start. It's going to start. Yep, it's going to start. Thing, as long as I take care of most of the maintenance. Yep. You know, I don't have to worry about the carburetor getting kept up and all this crap. Yep. It's going to run. I, I'm a long proponent of the, the fact that Harley-Davidson does have quite a few modern innovations. Now I know the anti-Harley crowd will say, well, yeah, maybe so, but still the V-twin is the dinosaur. And I, I'm, I'm not going to speak to that because it's irrelevant. It's an engine and it has its good points and its bad points, just like anything. So uh, we were uh, in a Harley dealership recently up in uh, Raleigh, Tobacco Road, Harley. You may have seen uh, a video when we pulled in there and we made a joke about the reverse gear. <laughs> but um, the point of it is, you know, we still went there and we looked at the bikes and we saw them and I'm still a fan of the Fat Bob. I like the Fat Bob. I just like the way the Altra looks. Yep. I, I always will. Yep. And uh, I saw the Pan American, and it looked a little bit, maybe because it was up on a stand, it just looked a little bit too tall. Uh, too heavy for what it was, but I don't know. I, I didn't test ride, I didn't even get on it, because it was up on a stand. Yeah, they didn't have any in, uh, in stock that were... Uh, yeah, nothing on the floor. Well. Which is good, because that means they're selling them, and apparently they can't hold on to them, so that's a good thing. Yeah, that's bad, they never got it. Eventually, uh... I'm thinking that Harley will come out with a sport bike of some kind. A street fighter like they developed before. And that would be nice. I would definitely give that a try. I've got the Kawasaki uh, H, what was it, ZH2SE. And that thing is ridiculously fast. It'll beat just about anything out there in a straight line in a quarter mile scenario it will beat just about anything. It's supercharged, and it's not even tuned high. It's tuned down from the other H2, you know, the racing one. And that's fine, but eventually I'm going to need to, you know, tone it down, maybe get a nice, you know, cruising-type bike. And Harley still fits the bill for me for that. So if I want to, you know, just kind of lazily going around the country on a motorcycle, feeling, you know, the breeze in my hair or whatever, maybe I'll do a Harley again. Depends on if they're reliable, which they are generally, as long as you don't do a stage four kit. I'm probably going to hear it from them now. I had a stage four kit and I never had a problem ever. Good for you. Well, there's a caveat. Yep. You got to ride it. Yeah, you gotta ride it. And mine had no end of problems, and I, I can't really speak ill of them because all of the people who worked on that bike failed to get it right and died. It's not like they had so many problems, as they didn't turn it right. Yep. Just shoddy workmanship. It might have been better had they put the actual Harley Davidson we were on so when they put on it. That's true. And then, of course, they, I take it in for whatever work, whatever. They said, we can't plug it into the Harley system. What do you mean you can't plug it in? It'll void the warranty if we do. Like, well, that would have been nice to know going into this. You know, we want to do a great build for you where it's going to be super duper awesome, this, that, and the other. It's going to be a monster, man. Uh, but, you know, later on they tell you, but you can't plug it into the Harley system. Yeah, they should have gave you the Harley Davidson. Yep. They would have done what it needed to do. It would have kept it for them whatever they needed it. Right. Yeah. They fucked you on that one. They did. I let them. You know, I was all about, you know, if I'm going to let this bike come to its full potential, these guys know what they're doing, I thought. 
they know how to make the bike go really fast because Ray Price Harley is what it was. Ray Price was a very famous Harley drag, you know, drag strip rider. Uh, he even had a, his own museum. It's still there upstairs at Tobacco Road Harley. So I thought, well, if it's the Ray Price dealership, they pride themselves on, you know, really good tuning and this and that. So I said, do what you got to do. Make it awesome. The only way it could have been faster than what I had is if they had put a, a turbo on it. And I wasn't about to do that. And it was fast. I mean, oh, yeah, the bike, that bike did get up and go. Colin, you the stage three. What's that? Colin, you got the stage three, right? Yes. Yes, I think you did. Just a different RPM range, different heads, right? Over yeah. There. Or, the, or they do the heads on the bike they have, they don't put your heads on it. I don't know. I can't remember anymore. But uh, as fast as that bike was, this bike in sport mode could take it. This bike could beat it. Roxboro. That's woman. Lady officer. Uh, there's Moose. He's got his water system. There's me. I got my water system. But his gloves are different from mine. He traded his white ones in for those. People say, oh, you guys look like the Goldwing twins. Well, you know, a lot of you Harley guys and BMW guys, you all look the same in your own ways. Either Space Cadet for the BMW guys or, you know, Butt Pirate. I was a Butt Pirate once. I had all that Butt Pirate stuff. As a matter of fact, what was the name of that guy in Florida? Uh, he made a video about, you know, Harley idiots or something, and he used a picture he found on Google of me, and he put a big silver dildo next to my face. <laughs> and then people told me, oh, you know, he's using your, your image, and da 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 and So I contacted him. I just want to let you know that's me you're talking about. And he laughed. He said, I just thought it was a generic image. Like, no, it's not a generic image. It's a human being called Mike. Mike Jones! A generic name for an authentic human. So, uh, yeah, I know what it, I know what that is. So when I say you dress like a butt pirate, I used to dress like a butt pirate. You know, the, the do-rag and the, the chaps and the boots and the leather vest. I'm a badass. When he's not on video, he still wears a lot of chaps and stuff. Kind of like the white thing my dad. Yeah, I like to wear my chaps. <laughs> All right, so on that lovely note, I'm going to sign off for a little bit here and... Don't forget to like and subscribe. Yes. Don't forget to... Give me money. Give me money. <laughs> See you, folks.